Good morning, YouTube. <laughs> How is everybody today? All right, we're gonna do a, a another little build or modification video to Little Blue Two today. Uh, for those of you who are looking into van dwelling but aren't necessarily into minimalism, you basically want to live in a van or travel in a van but have um, pretty much all the conveniences of having a house or a home. Uh, I have decided to upgrade Little Blue's entertainment system. Not that I'll be using it very much, but maybe my children can use it while we're um, parked somewhere at a park or something, uh, hanging out. Or I can use it at night after work or, or even during the morning when I wake up to catch up on the latest news and whatnot without um, internet access. And that is um, by using over-the-air entertainment. And by that I mean uh, television, yes. I finally caved in and bought a TV for Little Blue 2. This is a HD TV, and the reason I bought it is if you look at the price here, I don't know if it's showing on here. Oh, it's too bright. There it goes. It's $9.99, yeah. That's $9.99. I saw this TV at um, Goodwill the other day while I was looking around and could not pass that up. It was like $10. I plugged it in. You know, it had a, a DC plug, plugged it in, and it lit up like this. So then I was like, well, now it's a gamble, but at least, at least we know it powers on. Then I saw some static on the picture, so I was like, okay, the picture looks like it's good. Whether or not the tune and stuff is good is debatable, for, but for $10, I'll gamble. They also included the um, remote control with it, and it had the, the base mount. Uh, so it had pretty much everything that I needed, except, you know, I knew I probably wouldn't mount it on the base because I don't have a little table set up. Blue is not configured like an office and entertainment mode. It is set up for full-time um, self-urban camping in the city where you kind of pretty much just park the van and sleep. You don't really uh, want to live out of the van or in the van in the city because then it becomes really obvious what you're doing. Um... I basically set the vehicle up for cooking and for sleeping, not really for entertainment, although now at night when I'm laying down because I have my head going that way, I actually have um, television entertainment. And I'm going to even show you some little tricks to getting um, internet, internet connectivity for this TV. Anyhow, um, it has everything to make sure it works, and I did plug everything in to make sure it works. But let me show you the components that we need to kind of make something like this work. The first thing we need is a TV, obviously. You can buy these brand new at Walmart for about $80 or $90, somewhere in that range, about $90 for a small little TV like this. I think it's considered a 19 inch, 17, 19, 21 inch, because um, they measure it like diagonal. And a new one, like I said, is about $80, but the new one includes something that this one is missing. Um, which is this. I had to buy this. This was expensive. This is a, um, a power adapter to adapt the, the system to run off um, 12 volts. You can see right now I have it plugged in to the 120 volts through the inverter. But whenever you run the inverter, even when no power is being used, it loses electricity. It loses some battery power because... To run the inverter itself takes up electrical power. So you really don't want to run the inverter unless you absolutely have to. So what I'm going to do is actually use this, um, you know, it's a regular 12-volt cigarette lighter one with the adapter that goes into here. Because this thing says it needs one amp. How you can tell it's like on the back. It, oops. On the back it, it tells you what it needs. But I think this power thing told me what it is. See, look, this power says um, Cambridge... It is um, one amp. It says, um, I mean, 12 volts DC at one amp, and it says it has center polarity. So I originally was going to get a small little cigarette lighter plug, and I had one, but it didn't power it up. And then I thought of getting one uh, from Goodwill or something, but then, you know, maybe it won't work, and trying to find the right one with the right connector could prove to be a pain. So, since I'm working and have a little bit of cash, not a lot, but a little, I decided to go ahead and, and buy this one because it has different, different size plugs. I can also adjust the, um, the voltage from 12 volts down to 3 volts, 
and I can adjust the center polarity to positive or negative. So I can set this at um, 12 volts uh, positive center and it'll go up to 2.1 amps but I think that even though it says it'll go to 2.1 amps the draw on this TV is only 1 amp so it should be more than adequate to run the TV. And not only that, I think it includes extra USB plugs, so I can plug in even more USB. You can see I got USB plugs here, USB plugs there, I got all sorts of USB plugs. Anyhow, that's going to be our new power versus using um, the existing uh, adapter here that converts 120 volts to 12 volts. Since we already have 12 volts in the vehicle, let's stick with 12 volts. Now, I am not going to be using the stand that they included, so I'll be removing this, this part. That part's already been removed. I also had to buy um, a TV wall mount. I decided to get this one because this one's designed for 13 to 32 inch and has full motion, which means it can swivel. I think it can even tilt. So I'm gonna try to mount it, you know. I wasn't sure where to mount it originally, but after looking around, I think the only logical place really is either this corner or that corner. And now this particular door doesn't work so well, so I'm going to mount it here on this door because this is where the battery pack is and people don't really go through to sit on this side. People usually come in from the other side. So I'll mount it here behind the driver. Uh, that way it's kind of out of the way and hopefully it can swivel out. So someone sitting over there, mainly my children, can um, watch the TV and I'll show you how we get around having TV while we're driving because this system requires you to have antenna. You know, these TVs, uh, you can pretty much use any antenna, even those standard ones. But I decided to go with a little bit of an upgrade. I bought this um, flat panel HD TV antenna. It was like about $20. And it includes the little rabbit ears that you can add, but I decided not to add it just to make it look better. And I don't really care too much about super reception. I just wanted to receive, you know, some of the local news so I can watch the weather. I can also watch some entertainment shows. Um, and this is what it looks like. The, the, I have it all hooked up here for a reason. Let me see where it went here. Oh, here it is. This is pretty much the size and how small it is. You can see it still has the plastic on it. And that's where the rabbit ears can go if you want to attach rabbit ears. But I'm, I, I tested the unit out and it works fine without the rabbit ears. So I'll keep the rabbit ears off. And I bought this one because it was only $20. It says it has a, a about a 30 mile range. And of course, after you get the TV and the antenna and the power, you need to make sure it all works, which I, I will show you right here. Right now it's hooked up and getting um, 120 volts being converted back down to 12 volts. So... You can see my remote. I, I did put batteries in it. And it comes on and um, takes a while here to come on. It says, please wait. And you can see this was a channel that, that is picking up right now with the antenna. And we have working TV. I have the sound turned down low right now. But I can actually watch TV now uh, in the vehicle, which gives it a little bit more of a home feel. Um, you know, after a hard day of work, maybe I just want to come back and watch the news for a little bit before I go to sleep. Or when I have an off day, I can park somewhere, maybe even on the beach and watch TV if I want to. So I'm going to shut that off. But what we're going to do right now is basically uh, remove the bottom part, try to figure out a nice mounting location, mount the unit, plug in the 12 volt DC and see how it all works. So stay tuned. By the way, in case you were wondering where I am. I'm actually at Walmart, even though you hear birds all around me. I see people driving by here. This is um, Walmart that I'm working at. And the reason is I just bought the components here. And in case I need screws or other things, I wanted to be near the store. So I could go in there and pick up any missing parts. So we'll go ahead and try to mount it. I am going to try to mount it here initially, even though my thing is kind of splitting here. But I think it's strong enough to hold it. We'll just remove this backpack and figure out where a new home for this backpack, little tiny day pack thing that I have, and uh, see if we can't get this working. Although the driver's seat may be an issue sticking out so far. We'll see if we can't work around that. A while back, a YouTube subscriber, Alec, who views this channel and is local to this area, had dropped by to give me this really cool um, hyper tough 54 piece tool set 
which is actually going to come in handy right now because I couldn't find my screwdriver. But this set uses um, has socket and screwdrivers. So I'm hoping that I can get a tip here to get this thing in, and then we're gonna try to go ahead and mount that. So let me try to do this. I won't be able to do it single-handedly, so let me stop filming for now. I'll go ahead and put the correct tip on here and try to remove this, this bottom swivel. Well, not swivel, but, but the bottom mount, because we don't need that. That's just gonna get in the way. As you can see, this, uh, I guess, adaptable screwdriver is working just fine. I'm able to easily remove all these screws. And um, we'll be able to take the whole thing apart here in a moment. All right, I took all the screws, loosened them all, so we can remove this now, so it's just out of the way. While we're back here at the back of the unit, I thought it might be worth pointing out some cool things about this particular TV. This is the Insignia LCD TV, and it has a HDMI output, so we can actually, or input, so we can put HDMI devices and plug it into this. This is the DC 12 volt in, which is uh, really cool that we can run it off directly off 12 volts. This is a VGA input, which will allow us to hook up a computer an old style computer without the HDMI output which is what I have so I have a VGA cable I can hook up here and this can be used as a monitor that becomes very important because now this TV instead of just entertainment I can actually use it to do some work on my computer it has a, a plug here for audio and digital output if you want to output it and also the antenna in and it's also got component um, input this is important because this can allow me to hook up various devices which i am going to hook something up here to sh show you how we can turn this little tv into a smart tv and it can also hook up like dvd players um, vcrs uh, all sorts of stuff it also has a second hdmi input and a usb input now i'm not sure if the usb is just for showing pictures like jpegs uh, images image files or if it'll actually handle video because if it handles video and if it had power you could actually hook up a, um, a hard drive or a USB um, stick with uh, videos on it so we're gonna try that out so that's gonna be a future experiment but for now we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get the mount uh, on here and on to here because I need to figure that out Opening the box here, we get all the components, and they are actually quite a few. Wow, look how big the screws and stuff they provided are. I'm actually not going to be able to use these. <laughs> Some of them I can use to mount the TV, but onto the, the computer, I'm going to have to come up with my own. And it's got all sorts of other extra parts that I would... I think these are the end caps, which we could put on to make things look pretty. See how they, they go on here, the little end caps, which... I'm not so worried about, you know. These are, are designed to make things look pretty. Look at that. It covers the arm piece. So they're really not that important. I probably won't bother with them. But I need to make sure that this will mount and then how it will mount and that it will actually move. And looking here, they don't have any... Um, it looks like all they have is... Um, they want you to kind of like bolt, screw these in and bolt them in place. I think that's what they're designed for. I forget what these parts are. I may have to read and find out what these rubber washers are for. And of course this is to mount it into a wall. Look how deep they allow you to mount it in. But we're obviously not going to be able to do that with the van. If I try to go use a screw this this deep, I'd end up you know, going right through the whole unit. The, the van itself, the sheet metal, all the way through to the other side. So, let's see if we can figure out how to mount this. Alright, I've been messing with this for a little bit here, and I can see we got kind of an issue. It's going to require me actually building a framing system. Unless I mount it at a different location, which I don't really have a suitable location. Hmm, what to do? The, the issue is this. So this arm piece here, I could mount it up here, kind of, I think. But the problem is, do you see how the metal thing extends out right at the door? Yeah. That's not going to work because the TV actually would come outside. And even though you could fold this somewhat like that, 
the TV would still come outside. <laughs> and when you try to shut the door, you'll break the TV. So I have to mount it more like here. And the only way really to do that, and you can see there's also a problem here with this. So I would have only have to move it right over here like this. Because it, it cannot be over directly over the battery pack. This is where the battery pack sits. So I'd have to mount it right here, but there's nothing there. So what I have to do is make a beam. I'm thinking of heading over to Home Depot right now and getting some wood and cutting it exactly to size and building a frame, which is what's going to have to happen if I decide to mount it up front. Then, of course, it's really versatile up here because it can be used at the, at the foot of the bed. Or the other option is to go the other end and try to mount it back there, which I'm looking at. Or even on the side right there, on where the fan currently is right now. Then the, the TV would be kind of usable from the bed, but not really usable um, by the children when they're traveling in the vehicle. So... I think having it up front might be more useful. Not on, not only might, but would be a, definitely a lot more useful. So it looks like we're going to have to mount it right here somewhere. It's probably going to be the best spot. But that means making a, um, a frame to hold it up. So I think we're going to have to do another construction project here. I'm going to go ahead and end this for now because this video is kind of long and the construction portion of it is going to be um, somewhat involved. Let me figure this out. But until next time, everyone, hopefully the next time you see me um, filming this, we'll actually have some semblance of a system up where we can actually mount the TV because right now we can't mount it like this.